Hey, John here. In this video, I'm gonna step you through an in-depth content analysis and breakdown of one of my niche sites. This is not Fat Stacks. It's my second most profitable site in my portfolio. And as you can see, in the last 30 days, it earned $4,200. Search traffic is growing nicely. It's at 182,000 sessions per month. That's 164K users per month. It's a 15-month-old site with a DR41. And it is a bit misleading because I did see this site with 79 articles from another website that already had established traffic. So this did this site, although a fresh registration 15 months ago, did have that advantage of moving content over. You can see here some quick key revenue numbers. Now let's jump into the actual content aspect. Here's a brief content overview. Total articles published at eight six hundred and eight. Our average article word count, 2294. Average page views per article per month, 386. Total words published, 1.3 million. And I would assess the content on this site, the quality of it as high. I wouldn't go so far as to say it's very high, but I have an in-house writer who's more or less running the site. She's exceptional, so the content on the site is very, very good. And that probably accounts for its very quick growth over the last 15 months. Okay, so basically what I did here is I took the top 10 performing articles in terms of how much search traffic they get and provided some key information. And the reason I did this, and I hope it helps, is to, to try to get, glean some key takeaways in terms of content strategy. And at the end of this video, I do have several takeaways that I've learned and that we can take from data such as what I'm presenting in the next three slides, a series of tables. So the top 10 articles, you could see the actual search. Now this is Google search. I filtered for Google search, although the lion's share of the traffic to the site is Google search, so I'm not sure that was necessary. And you can see it ranges from, a, you know, the range is quite big within the first 10 articles. Now keep in mind, there's 608 articles in, on this site. So, artic, you know, the first four articles perform very, very well. And then it drops off very quickly down to 2,400 visitors per, per month for article 10. Okay. What you also want to notice is the Google position. And, the, and some, of, some of these are interesting because this is position six for 5,800 actual search visitors. I say actual search traffic here because this isn't a number that was pulled from Ahrefs, which is the what you should get in terms of traffic levels. This is the actual traffic levels from Google Analytics. So you can see in some cases where I'm not even ranked in the top three here, number six, position four, position five, these articles are actually pulling in some pretty good traffic relative to the whole site. I have another site where 2,600 is pretty good, but there are articles getting pushing over 20,000 visitors per month. So it's just a bigger site and, it, and it's not really apples to apples. So what's interesting here is you don't necessarily need to be in position one, two, or three for your main keyword because these articles are pulling in a lot of traffic for additional keywords and it's adding up. This is probably the most noticeable metric here, 5,800 search visitors per month for position six for its main keyword, okay? So keyword difficulty, I, this was interesting really only in that there's not really any correlation between the performance of this content and the keyword difficulty. Now, I, I do do quite a bit of filtering when I do keyword research for keyword difficulty, and it's not that I count or rely on it 100%. It's, it's not even close to 100% accurate. I use it merely as a guideline in trying to at least help me pick some the next batch of articles based on that because it's not perfect and these metrics certainly account for that so you take this or you take this right we've got a keyword difficulty of 84 now that's really high up that's re this site while the site is performing well it's a dr41 it doesn't have millions of visitors it it has a little over 2,000 referring domains so this is not an seo powerhouse site by any stretch of the imagination and yet here we go i'm getting i'm ranking number six for a keyword difficulty 84 okay so and then and then you have something here like this where it's keyword difficulty nine on position and five and this is one of my top performing articles so you can see these keyword difficulty numbers are all over the map so my takeaway from this is in with respect to KD is that it's not super reliable. I'm still going to use it. I'm, I'm not going to bail on using this for keyword research, but I think you really need to take it with a grain of salt. And let's say I want to look at the average word count across these top 10 articles. Remember I said in the over, uh, the average word count for all the content on the entire site was a little over 2,200 words. Well, you can see here the average is quite a bit higher. Now, 
Uh, I have a, about, I would say, 15 articles that are pushing north of 10,000 words per article. I don't want to make it seem like that's the norm for me. The, these are very, very unusual articles that I'm pushing more than, ten, in fact, more than 5,000 words per article. These are really strong cornerstone articles that we put a ton of effort into. And that's why I have such a high word count. It is not the norm. I think if we filtered out for these three that are abnormally high, we'd come in close to around the site average, probably probably a bit higher. We've got some 33, 3400s. The point is the articles on the site are fairly long. Now, a caveat that with this, and that is, and I would say in the last two months, I've really adjusted from focusing on 2,500, 3,000 plus word articles. And I really knocked it down to more in the range of 1,000 to 1,300 word articles. We're going for some really long tail sort of Q&A type stuff. So that content hasn't had an opportunity to rank. I suspect it's going to do fairly well. I don't think it will ever be a traffic powerhouse to something to this extent, but it is a lot lower of a word count and lower costs to publish and so on and so forth. So I don't want to make it seem like, like, oh, okay, now I see John said, you know, his, his best content is in the three to 3,500 range for, um, word count. No, I, I don't think that that's necessary at all. It's just this is the approach I took initially with the site with some really long content. This is the stuff that's actually ranking now. It'll be interesting to see what is working best on this site in six months or 12 months because it's growing so quickly and so many older articles that I would say are in the eight, nine, 10 month range are really climbing into the top five positions right now. So there's going to be a lot of jostling going on in terms of which content's going to be getting the, the most search traffic. So I think this is misleading. I plan to do more of these videos for some of my other niche sites, uh, both smaller and my one larger site. And you'll see that the word counts are significantly lower than this in terms of averages. So this is my favorite screen of this entire analysis, and this is applying the 80-20 rule to content on a website. Okay, so basically what's happening here, the top 10 articles on the site, basically 10 articles divided by 608 total articles makes up 1.64% of the total content, and yet it's pulling in 24% of the overall traffic. That's a pretty substantial number. Now, this is a side note. I've done some of this analysis with my larger site and also with some of my smaller sites. This number goes down. All of these numbers go down. The larger your site gets and the longer it's published because your traffic is going to diversify across a lot more articles, all right? For my sm for smaller sites that I have, these numbers are actually bigger. But I would say this site is a really good example to use for this content analysis because it has 600 articles it's been around for 15 months so it's getting into that sweet spot of you know 18 to 24 months uh, of age in terms of traffic it has over 200,000 monthly uh, sessions so there's a lot of good metrics that make this a really good uh, an site for analysis and you'll see here the top 25 is four percent of the overall content and the traffic overall is 44 and we could just jump ahead you can read this for yourself but top 116 percent of overall content is 84% of the overall traffic. So basically, I could get rid of 500 of my articles, and I'm still going to earn and have 84% of a revenue and content. That gives you pause to really think here, because that means 500 of my articles that I spent money on, they, they don't cost any less than the top 100. Okay, that, that's the problem, right? I spent a ton of money on 500 articles that aren't doing very well. Now, I'm working on improving rankings with older content and doing some updating and so forth. But realistically, for this site, that's not going to actually ever get completed, at least in the next year or two. So it's kind of a moot point. And I suspect for a lot of sites out there, for all of us, this is the problem. What we really want to do here is we want to try to figure out and going forward, focus our efforts on these top 100 articles and not have you know, basically 84% or 83% of our content basically doing nothing. That's a lot of money. Think of, I mean, you know, this, this was actually quite, when, when I realized that that 500 of my articles were almost basically doing nothing, that, that is quite a statistic that resonated with me. And that means I need to really dig in and take a look, closer look at what's going on with this site. And I suspect the same with my other sites. 
The last data table I want to go into is the content optimizer analysis. Now, basically what I did here is I took the same 10 articles. These are the top performing by Google search traffic. And I ran them through both market muse, the, the target scores, and then the actual scores that we achieved with the content. So market muse works like this. The, you, you run a, an article through it. You, you provide the keyword you're going for, and it'll give you a target score at once. Now, this is just a a score that market muse uses in its own little algorithm in terms of grading content and it's it's kind of in a vacuum it's not like on a spectrum of 0 to 100 it just basically says here's the target if you exceed the target i assume that that's probably a good thing to do and then I also use Phrase, which is a content opti uh, optimizer as well. Um, it's a lot less surgical. It really just sort of gives these percentages. And what I found with my content, I, I suspect because this, this content is all, all of it is quite, quite good. And so basically for most of it, we hit 100% in Phrase, but it's, it's still pretty blunt as a content grader. Okay, I think there are better out there. I think Market Muse is a little bit more nuanced. ClearScope is definitely very nice in terms of these letter grades it offers. Surfer SEO does a pretty good job with content grading as well. So I think there are better options. Phrase has a whole lot of really cool features though. If you're looking for like this uh, online tool with a certain amount of artificial intelligence wrapped up into it. Don't get too excited. It's not going to like write everything for you, but it can help build outlines, help you come up with questions to add to your articles. There's a lot of stuff at Phrase I really like. I just don't think their content grader is the best. So I typically rely more on Market Muse. So you could see here, basically the takeaway is this. I think there is some correlation between especially Market Muse scores uh, in terms of my exceeding the target scores and rankings. Now, this is probably not even close to enough data, but I've been using Market Muse for a long time. I find overall it's helpful in terms of uh, getting more thorough content uh, completed, whether it's writing a new article or upgrading or improving an existing article. So I think there's definitely a correlation between that, but it's not perfect. For example, you can see here, um, we've got a uh, Google number one ranking with an actual score that comes under the target. Okay, this article didn't meet it, and I'm still ranking number one, right? So there's always going to be exceptions with all this stuff. And you can look at these scores for yourself more carefully. And you can see how it ranks. And then you can, you can even have the, a third element to it, and that is keyword difficulty and see how that fits in. As much as I looked at all this, I didn't even really see any real correlation between when we were looking at keyword difficulty and rankings a whole lot. And then even trying to apply whether these content optimizers can, can help dictate this as well. I'm just not finding any strong correlation there. So I think at the end of the day, what you really need to think about when you're, when you're choosing topics to publish on, there's a lot more important things to consider. And a big one for me is looking at your top 10 articles and looking at the search traffic here and trying to figure out if there's a pattern. Is there three articles in your top 10 that are really related and are within sort of the same topic area, like inside the niche itself? Or are there three or four articles that have a similar concept? And by article concept, I mean, is it a review? Is it a comparison? Is it a listicle? Is it a timeline? What kind of article is it? And are you seeing a pattern between the types of articles that you're doing and or the subtopics within the site that tend to be the best performers on your site? If you can spot a pattern like that, you have taken a lot of guesswork out of where you should go in the future in terms of what types of content you should be ordering. And what I'm talking about right now is really probably the biggest takeaway uh, in this video and from all this data that, that I've learned. And I've learned this over the years that I tend to really hope that something's going to work at some point. And once something works, and especially if I can spot a pattern of something that's working, I'm going to exhaust that specific pattern as much as I can. Because basically Google is telling you that, hey, we like your site for this type of article for this topic, and we're ranking you for that. And there, there's obviously other factors involved, but the fact that you actually succeeded with that, that means you've got to do more of that because Google, you know, you could become the absolute authority within that subtopic, and that's only going to help you out. And I wouldn't get too wrapped up about search volume when looking for additional keywords for similar topics because, you know, obviously if you've covered the big keywords, 
if you're going to add more articles to that particular cluster, obviously you're going to be dealing with keywords that aren't going to get as much search volume um, as reported in Ahrefs or other tools. But remember, you know, there's there's a lot more traffic to be had than just the one keyword you're targeting, as shown by this. I mean, you know, I've got Google Position 6. That's not generally going to generate all that much traffic to any website, really. It's certainly not going to generate 5,800. This is all from other keywords that I'm ranking for for that article, okay? So that's a really important point to keep in mind. So I'm going to rip through the last key takeaways here. I already really beat this, this one to death here and that is analyze your top performing articles. Um, you can get good traffic if you're not ranking number one for your main keyword, and that's okay. On the flip side, that doesn't mean it's sort of like, oh, okay, well, I'm position five, eh, good enough. I wouldn't take that sense. I, if I'm in the top three, I'm, I'm likely not going to adjust anything just because, well, it's working really well. Remember, sometimes if you do update content, you might change it, and it might actually drop rather than go up just because the whole way uh, the article structure and everything has changed. Typically, I don't think that's going to happen, but it can happen. But anything in position four or, or lower down in the SERPs, I would, I would spend some time to update and prove it if you can. The 80-20 rule applies big, big, big time with your top content. And so you always want to be looking at, okay, well, what content is, is getting in that, you know, top 20% performer? And what did, is there any patterns in the content that's not working? That's also an equally good question. It's like, okay, well, avoid that content. Avoid those topics. If you have a whole bunch of article concepts or types of articles or uh, topics that you're publishing on and none of it's working, okay, that means just leave it alone. Go focus on what is working. Another takeaway, content optimizers likely help. I don't think there's enough data in this analysis at all to, to say that there's some correlation between, you know, um, good content optimizer scores and top rankings. I just, you know, I mean, I didn't want to run 500 articles through it. But I do find them helpful regardless. I find them helpful for writers. I find them helpful for myself. I find them helpful for new content and for updating existing content. So I do use it. If you're just getting started, they are expensive. I would not invest in it. But if you're fairly well established and your, your site's doing four or five figures a month, I think it's a worthwhile investment in that particular software. And lastly, and I already mentioned this, I don't really see a big correlation between Ahrefs keyword difficulty and rankings. I'm just not seeing it in this. I'm not seeing it in other sites. I uh, Obviously, this was not a whole lot of data at all to be based off. It's 10 articles. I should probably do a more in-depth analysis on that, but I'm just not seeing it. I'm still going to use keyword difficulty to an extent. I'm not going to rely on a big, big, big time. I think to an extent it can be helpful, and I think that's the approach you want to use it if you're using Ahrefs at all. Lastly, if you want to learn more, you can check out my free course at fatstacksblog.com, or and it's called Six Figure Based on Blogger. It's on the homepage, and you can sign up. It's free. Thanks a lot for watching.